artisans that jump into this medium, even though they're not religious in any way, eventually will be transformed. The term santo is a vernacular Spanish term and refers to any image of a saint, um, either painted or three-dimensional. A santero or a santera is a person who actually carves or paints those images. Prior to 1680 and the Pueblo Revolt, much of the artwork that adorned churches in New Mexico missions uh, were either imported from Spain or brought up from Mexico City. Then the Pueblo Revolt happened and most of that artwork was destroyed. It wasn't until the recolonization um, with de Vargas in 1692 that you see the real blossoming of the classical Santero tradition happening around 1750, going all the way up to the late 19th century. A retablo is a hand adds pine panel called a tabla. A bulto is a three-dimensional sculpture of a saint, either carved from ponderosa pine or cottonwood. So many of the pieces uh, from New Mexico, both bultos and retablos, were used either in churches, private chapels, or for home worship. Most of them were cared for like family members. So many of these old world saints were reinterpreted in New Mexico. For instance, Saint Joseph generally holds in his hand a lily, but in New Mexico holds a local flower, the hollyhock. Another saint that comes to mind is San Acasio, who was a Roman soldier. He's usually depicted in his soldier garb, but in New Mexico, he is wearing the soldier's uniform of the northern frontier, and down below him is his army also dressed in the same uniforms. So again, reinterpreting old world saints in a new world setting. With the opening of the Santa Fe Trail and the coming of the railroad into New Mexico, there was an abundance of mass-produced um, religious artifacts coming into New Mexico, and those often replaced um, the santos that were being made in New Mexico. That santero tradition in New Mexico slowly died out. I was inspired by my grandfather, who was a santero here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. With the research that I've done in the past and the beautiful examples that the museums do have, that has helped me in uh, respect and honor the abilities of the artisans from long ago. The Santero tradition certainly has had a renaissance, really starting 1930s, 1940s, um, with such Santeros as Charlie Carrillo and Victor Goler and um, Ramon Lopez. And they are still using those techniques that the early Santeros used, such as water-soluble paints produced from minerals and plant materials. There's a, a personal satisfaction in creating and making the paints. I mean, you're like bonding with your medium. This iron oxide comes from Costilla, New Mexico. Um, it was used as face paint by the Indians, a mineral pigment, and so is this tierra verde, and also the yellow ochre. And this brown color, it's black walnut. It's made from a 
black walnut hulls. It's a beautiful color for hair, the beards and stuff. This looks very nice. The work that the Santeros make today will live on and, and keep our culture strong. And uh, there's one saying that I like to say is, Los Santeros se van, pero sus obras quedan. The Santeros eventually die, but their work remains. <laughs>